So last week at the meditation center, we looked at the third of the Buddha's four noble truths as he offered them some 2,500 years ago. As most of you, I think, know or will remember, the first noble truth, as declared by the Buddha, is the truth of dukkha, the truth of suffering. And as I always like to say, the Buddha did not say life is suffering. He certainly didn't say life is about suffering. He simply said there is the truth of suffering. The second noble truth is the truth of the cause. There is a cause for suffering. There always is a cause. And he identified the cause. We'll come back in a moment. And then this week, as I said, we looked at the third noble truth, which is the truth of the end of suffering, or sometimes said to be the cessation of suffering. So the first noble truth is that there is suffering. The second noble truth is that there is a cause. And specifically, the Buddha identified that cause as that sense of craving that doesn't seem to stop, that just is endless. No matter what we have, it doesn't seem to be enough. No matter what we have achieved, it doesn't seem to be enough. And so there's this ongoing sense of craving. And it may be a craving for happiness, which would seem to make sense. I want to be happy, so I go out seeking those things that will make me happy. And where do we logically look? We look at those places or those events or those phenomena that have produced moments of pleasure. Great meals, great visual things, great sounds, great physical sensations. But what we fail to realize is how temporary they are, how impermanent they are and that there is no ongoing, lasting happiness in that pursuit. So it is that sense of craving and always seeking that we say is the cause of dukkha. Well, the interesting relationship between the cause, the second noble truth, and the end would seem rather obvious. If I can identify the cause, would I not then immediately see how to bring that cause to an end? Stop doing what is the cause of suffering. And indeed, that is the path that one follows. And it does seem that they're just linked like this. Here is the cause. Stop the cause. Be free of that suffering not any more complex than touching a hot stove and going, ah, and realizing if I touch that stove when it's hot, there's going to be suffering, there's going to be physical pain. So I pull my hand away, and if I do that enough times throughout the course of my life, I get the idea and I eliminate one cause of suffering, probably. Maybe one time I forget. But essentially, that's the idea. To acknowledge that there is suffering, to see the cause, to stop the cause, which brings about the end of suffering. Well, there is an issue to be dealt with here, and that is that this is a process that is going to be experienced by us and we are human beings, and we have other factors to deal with, such as, as an example, such a thing as habit energy. Habit energy is very powerful. We tend to repeat what we have done. We tend to repeat what we have said. We tend to repeat our patterns of thinking. And it can be very difficult to make changes. Same thing is true of conditioning. It's called conditioned behavior or responsive behavior 
reactive patterns. And they're all, in a sense, part of habit energy. We have been doing, saying, thinking certain things in certain ways, and it's difficult to break those patterns. Even when we see that we are causing ourselves stress, discomfort, bringing about a sense of unsatisfactoriness, and so it usually for most of us takes time. Now, some people will say, isn't this approach sort of pessimistic to look at suffering, to look at dukkha? Is that looking at the half-empty side? Well, Buddhists will say that the Dharma, the teachings, are neither pessimistic nor optimistic. They are realistic. So let's just look at that in one real-life situation. Let's say a person doesn't feel well, feels ill. The person goes to the doctor, the doctor examines the person, and the doctor says, yes, there is an illness. That's why you are feeling uncomfortable. And I can write this prescription, and you take it, get it filled, take this medication, and you will be better. Now, the person who is feeling ill decides to be optimistic. He says, well, maybe there really isn't an illness after all, or maybe it's not very serious, or maybe I don't need to do anything about it, so I will ignore this advice of the doctor. And lo and behold, the illness continues, and there's a very good chance that the illness becomes worse. Now, is that person being optimistic, or is that person being foolish? So you see, it's not a matter of optimism or, pe or pessimism, it's a matter of what works, what makes sense. So the Buddhist teaching, again, was to acknowledge that there is an illness, and in fact, he, he at times used that very word, there is an illness, there is a problem, there is an issue, there is dukkha, and there is a cause, and there is a way to end that, and that is to see clearly how we are causing ourselves dukkha, and the way to do that, he said, was to sit down and get quiet, begin this practice of meditation where we're not dealing with the busyness of everyday life, but we are looking at the busyness of what goes on in the mind. And since the mind is the great controller, we want to know what is going on in the mind so that we can look at thought processes that serve us well and those that don't. So thoughts and actions that lead to dukkha, we want to work on ending, and thoughts and actions that promote well-being, in the classical terminology, wholesomeness, skillfulness, we want to encourage that way of living and bring an end to suffering. And that end is called nirvana. It is the extinction, nirvana means extinction, it is the extinction of dukkha, the extinction of the ways that we cause ourselves unhappiness. So, why don't we sit with that for a minute or two because it sounds so simple and on a certain level it is and yet it is enormously deep and enormously profound because as you begin to look you just look deeper and deeper and deeper and every time you see something it seems that there are 20 more some things that that opens up. So let's sit for a minute and then we'll hear what's going on with you.